Looks like we are live. I can see myself. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another Zozin session. I hope the mic is not too loud. And let's make a little bit of an announcement. Uh, let's make a little bit of an announcement uh, on our Discord server. Uh, so this is going to be um, actually a red circle live on Twitch. And what we're doing today is we're adding support for the string literals for our compiler. Okay, so it's going to be HTTPS, twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash sodding, uh, and it's going to be pinged. There we go. So that's what we're doing today. And um, we continue to develop our language, which is called Porth, which is basically fourth, but implemented in Python. It's not really fourth, it's more of a like inspired by fourth, uh, but it's implemented in Python nonetheless. Um, so uh, you can find the source code of this language in the description if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on Twitch, you can find uh, this thing in the uh, in the chat. So, all right, let's take a look at this entire thing. In the previous stream, uh, we added, uh, we actually sort of uh, proved and confirmed that the language is uh, Turing complete by implementing rule 110, right? So this is how rule 110 looks like in, a, in, in this language. And let's take a look if it works or not. Hello, everyone. Hello, uh, Bitstream, Supini, Knafli, Aigudduk. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, everyone. So uh, let me take a look. So this is going to be Porth. And I think I already fetched the latest changes. Uh, so let's do fetch from origin uh, to, to the two. And uh, yeah. So if I try to compile and simultaneously run uh, rule 110, uh, there you go, it actually prints the, uh, you know, very famous uh, rule 110 pattern. So I also realized that I forgot to put something behind my camera. So I usually do the following thing where I just uh, get the floating window and put it behind my camera. So every time there's something behind my camera, it's not visible not only for you, but also for me. So I know how to adjust everything on my screen. Uh, Lindra Braga, thank Sorry, you so much for... <laughs> Thank you so much for 10 months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic Rule 110 Club. All right, so our language is actually very powerful. Uh, it is Turing complete. That means you can do whatever you can uh, in other languages, right? So it's not particularly convenient, but you can do uh, a lot of things in it. Right, so, and we're going into a phase of developing like more quality of life features. And uh, one of the things that we're missing in our language is uh, string literals. There's literally no string literals. And if you want to write something like hello world uh, in this language, you'll have to do it like this. Uh, right, so uh, you literally have to like character by character copy the hello world message into the memory and then call the write syscall. And as you can see here, we're just character by character copying, uh, you know, the uh, the message and it, it is not really uh, convenient right so i think the time has, has finally come to implement some sort of a support for string literals right so the question is how string literals are going to be implemented in this specific language this is actually a very good question this is a stack based language just like uh, fourth and fourth uh, does also support string literals but it supports them in a really weird way so there is like a separate word dot quote uh, that sort of starts um, you know, parsing of the string or something like that. I, I never understood how like string literals work in forth and I don't, I don't know, I don't want to implement them like this. Uh, what I want to have is essentially you just put a, a string literal like this, uh, like you would do in any other language, and that essentially pushes the address of the beginning of that string to the stack. So basically doing something like this is similar to doing something like this, right? When you put a number, it pushes that number to the stack. When, uh, and when I pu uh, put a string in here, it will put the um, the address of that string on the stack as well, right? So, and uh, the string itself is gonna be located somewhere in the, in the static memory, right? So every time you write something like this, it will reserve a little bit of space in the static memory and we'll just put it there. And this is gonna be the command to put that 
address uh, onto the stack so you can do i don't know like right operation on this entire thing if you know what i'm talking about uh, hello Manasoyme, hello Thrush5, Supinik 4 and Cell4, Twostep, hello, hello everyone, how are you guys doing? So, um, yeah, but here is an interesting thing, uh, quite often we not only need to know the, um, the address of the beginning of the string, but we also need to know the size of the string. So we need some sort of a way to know the size of the string, and primarily we need that for write syscalls. Right. If you take a look at the write syscall uh, in Linux specifically, or in POSIX generally, I would say, uh, it accepts three arguments. It accepts the file descriptor, basically where you want to print that string, then the beginning of the string, and then the size of the string. Right. So to be able to write uh, strings with the write syscall, we need to know its size. Right. And I was thinking, how can we implement that? Um, so. And uh, I came to a conclusion that maybe when you provide the string literal, it not just pushes the address on, uh, onto the stack. It will first push the size uh, of the string, right? So it's going to be the size of the string and then the address. So a single operation pushes two things onto the stack simultaneously, the size of the address and the address of the cell, not, not the size of the address, the size of the string and the address itself. Right, that way, uh, then you can provide the std in um, and uh, then the number of the syscall and then you can perform the syscall uh, to uh, syscall write, right? And the entire hello world is going to look like this, right? So, um, because the first thing that you have to put on the stack is the size of the string, then uh, the string itself, then the standard input. So essentially like this, but in reverse order, because it's a stack based language, right? So because uh, of course is a stack based, the first thing has to be this and then this and then this. So to achieve this sort of look, look and feel uh, of the right syscall, I think uh, we're going to make string literals to actually push two things on the stack instead of one. Does it make sense? Um, right. I think, I think it's a relatively good solution, right? So you simultaneously get the size of the string and the string itself. And you, if you don't need it, um, I don't know, maybe you can do something like swap, uh, which will uh, swap the size of the string in the address and then just drop this entire thing and you get only uh, only the string, but uh, you don't know its size. Quite often you would need the size of the string so to, you know, to do boundary checks. Um, yeah, it's actually a good point. Like quite often you do need the size of the string. So it makes sense to actually, you know, have it in here. Uh, does it make sense? Uh, mm, 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 is fourth a low level language? It's pretty low level as far as I know. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's go ahead and implement this entire thing, I suppose. Um, unfortunately, uh, we'll have to do um, a lot of refactoring, not a lot of refactoring, but uh, enough refactoring to the way we parse everything, because our lexer is not really designed to uh, work, to support string literals at all. So, and one of the interesting problems that we have right now is that we don't have a separation between the tokens of the language and the operations of the language. Right, you see, uh, when we grab the uh, the source code, like a rule 110 source code, right, and we split basically everything by words, right, and then we iterate through these words and we straight up convert them to operations, to the operations of the language. Uh, and there is no intermediate like tokenization step, basically operation equals token, which in my opinion makes it kind of difficult to work with, because um, um, in reality, we have a lot of operations, but we only have like a uh, few kinds of tokens. Um, nice lot. Thank you so much for 15 months of tier so 1 subscription. So didn't come right indeed. Thank you so much for 15 months of tier 1 subscription and welcome to our uh, Epic Porth Club. Uh, all right, so uh, yeah, so right now we don't really have that many kinds of tokens. All right, if we take a look at the tokenization, so I think it's some, some, somewhere lex file, um, and uh, yeah, where it is. 
uh, I missed it. So the function is called parse token as op. So token in this case means just like a word, right? Um, and the first kind of a token is basically a word, right? So it can be plus, minus, uh, something that represents the operation, right? So something that represents operation. And the second kind of token is an integer. And as you can see, there is like a huge discrepancy between how we parse those things, right? So words are just like, we look them up. If they're equal to something, it straight up turns into, into operation. Uh, if it's an integer, we're trying to convert it into an integer. And if we can do that, we just throw an exception. So, and um, we are about to add uh, a third kind of token, right? We're about to add a third kind of token and that token is going to be a string. So we have a lot of operations, but the kinds of tokens, there is like two and we're about to add the third one, uh, integer, string and word. All right, so maybe the first thing that I want to do in here, I want to introduce the notion of a token, right? So introduce three kind of, uh, two kind of tokens, uh, word and integer, and uh, separate tokenization phase and the phase of converting tokens into operations. Uh, so that's going to be basically the idea, right? So this is going to be the first step. And after that, we can uh, add support for, for the strings. Does that sound good? Sounds Gucci? Sounds Tamaguchi? Um... <clears throat> Are strings similar to comments? Uh, no. So uh, let's go ahead and introduce the enumeration uh, for our nation. I, I even put a to-do in here, right? Introduce the notion of the tokens, right? So uh, let me go ahead and create a separate branch for this entire thing. So we're going to have string literals. Uh, right, string literals, and uh, I already made some changes in here, so I'm gonna just remove this entire stuff. So, token, uh, the first token is gonna be a word, right? So, and since we're starting a new enumeration, I'm gonna be resetting IOTA. So, this is gonna be that. Uh, the next token is going to be uh, an integer, uh, IOTA, and then we're gonna have something like count tokens, right? IOTA yet again. Mm, uh, so, and uh, let me think how we're going to do all of that. So, this is like parse talking as OP. <clears throat> parse talking as OP. And uh, what I'm thinking is that the parse token as, uh, as OP is used in a single function, right? So it is in fact used in a single function. Um, and maybe this is where we want to perform this entire stuff. <clears throat> perform this entire stuff. So essentially we should try to parse the token as the um, uh, as an integer. And if it's not an integer, uh, we have to parse it somehow differently. Uh, we have to parse it somehow differently. So I'm thinking, do I want to actually start doing that uh, in this function or do I want to do that in a separate function? Because if I start modifying this function, it will break everywhere. And I do not particularly want that, All right? So I do not particularly want that. Mm -mm. So we have a lex file. Uh, two, two, two. So here is the token. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm gonna actually do it like that. So I need some sort of a function that accepts the token, right? So rather like the text of the token, text uh, of token, right? So it accepts text of token. And the first thing it tries to do, it tries to convert this entire thing into um, an integer, right? So it tries to convert it into an integer. Uh, and then if it catches some sort of a, uh, error, right? So this is gonna be accept. Uh, is it accept uh, value error, right? So this is a value error. Uh, it will essentially return uh, this as a word, right? So it's gonna be token, um, token word, and it uses text of token, uh, right? And otherwise it will return uh, token integer, and this is gonna be uh, the value, right? We might as well actually inline this right away, 
right? Because uh, if this entire thing will throw an exception, uh, it, it will never be returned, right? So and then uh, we're going to return this thing instead. So this is essentially what I want to do in here. And in fact, I want to just wrap this text of token uh, like this. And I need to come up with a name for this function. I'm not sure how to call this entire function. If you know what I'm talking about, uh, all right, so... Mm -mm -mm -mm. So lex file, so lex line, um, maybe this could be something like lex word, probably. So, so this is the line. Yeah, I, th I think it's a actually a good idea to ca call it lex word, right? So you see, at higher level, you are essentially lexing a file. Within the file, you're lexing each individual line, and within the each individual line, you're, you're lexing a, a single word, right? And because of that, we don't really need this entire stuff, right? So this is going to be the final token, and uh, what we're doing is just we're lexing the word, right? So we're lexing a single word. Uh, and this entire thing should work like that. Okay, so now we have some sort of a hierarchy. Um, so uh, let me let me see. Sodin, did you somehow prepare before creating your compiler or your freestyling? Well, I did in fact prepare for the streams. I prepared for the stream for 15 years while working as a software developer. So yes. I have prepared, I have 15 years uh, of preparation. Um, to, 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 to. Mm -mm. All right, so uh, let's continue. So let me see, what I wanna do actually in here is um, I want to uh, load this entire thing. So uh, this is gonna be porth. Two, 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 two. There we go. Hopefully that will load everything correctly. And I want to just check how can you lex a particular word, right? So if I put hello in here, as you can see, it puts hello and zero as an indicator that it's a it's a word, All right? If I put something like sixty nine in here, it puts one in here, indicated that it's a it's an integer, right? So and now if I try to lex a file, right? If I try to lex a file, and let's see what kind of file do we want to lex. Let's lex something uh, very simple. Well, I mean, not necessarily simple. Let's let uh, rule 110 and see how it's going to look like. Uh, all right, so there you go. Here is the sequence of lexems or tokens, right? So first three things uh, are the location, the file path, the uh, line and the column, and then the token itself, right? The token itself, it's the, the type of the token and the value of the token, right? So though, I don't know, maybe each individual token, maybe this entire thing can be just merged, if you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, so the token itself becomes rather complicated. Right. So as you can see, you have a location, you have a kind of token and you have the, the value of the token. Maybe the, the time has come to introduce the uh, some sort of like a convention for, for this kind of stuff. Right. So for the operations, we have a convention that it's a dictionary with these following uh, fields, right? Type, location, uh, value and jump. And we have documentation of this entire thing. And maybe we can... Uh, do a similar thing for the uh, for the token as well, right? So there's going to be dictionary that has location, the type of the token, and uh, the value of the token. And the value could be either uh, an integer, if it's an integer token, a string, it, if it's a word token, uh, and so on and so forth, right? So we can try to do something similar. Um, okay. So uh, let's go ahead and maybe document that. So this is going to be something like token is uh, a dictionary. Um, so, um, maybe you should use, start using typed Python, uh, to describe this kind of thing. So maybe you should, st should start using classes or I don't know, uh, but I find dictionaries a little bit easier to use for myself. And I don't really care, uh, too much about like the style of development because I do plan to rewrite the entire compiler in Porth itself. 
right? So the, the ultimate goal is to make the Porth compiler self-hosted, right? So that means that it's going to be written in itself. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right, so token is a dict, a gotcha hyper. Uh, with the following uh, possible fields, right? So the first one is uh, type, uh, the type of the uh, of the token, right? One of token uh, word, uh, token integer, etc. Uh, defined below, right? Mm define below location location of uh, the token within a file uh, I might as well actually copy paste uh, this entire thing uh, right mm, value uh, the value of the token uh, depending on the type of the token uh, of the token right so for token word it's uh, a string uh, for token uh, token integer it's uh, int uh, we might as well actually use the convention of uh, of python right so it's str right for this one it's int and so on and so forth so the token is basically this kind of thing all right, so we documented that, and when I lex uh, a word, right, I lex a word, uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. so this is the file pass, and this is the token. Uh, mm, so the question is, where should I even do all of that? So here I only have a column. Mm -mm -mm. So we can have something like token type, token value, right? We can have a token type and token value. And this is where we can start uh, doing the final preparation, right? So this one is essentially going to be a location. Right, then we're gonna have a type of this entire thing and the type is gonna be a token uh, type, right? So here is a token type and then here we're gonna have uh, a value which is gonna be a token value, right? So this is how we uh, do all of that and this is gonna be a sequence of dictionaries, right? Um, cool. So let me reload the entire thing. So this is gonna be a load. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna reload the entire thing and uh, lex file uh -huh. and there we go so as you can see this is a sequence of dictionaries now right so we, it has different types the location is basically a triple and then the value depending on the value we have this kind of thing um, <clears throat> so uh, we lexed a file and now here's an interesting thing. So parse token as OP. So now parse token should expect the token that is a dictionary. You see, uh, before we expected the token is like a tuple, but now we have to expect a completely different thing. Uh, all right, so it does row plus one and column plus one, um, adjusting everything. So um, maybe I should do plus one in here somewhere yeah i think i should do that in here so here is the uh here is the column right so this is going to be column plus one and um you know what i think i have to do that like right here so row plus one and column plus one right so the reason why i'm doing plus one is because usually emacs um uh, it expects the rows and columns numeration starting from one for whatever reason i don't know why uh even though this is a programmer's tool right as far as i can understand it still kind of expects from one and a lot of other tools also expect numeration from one it's kind of weird uh but it is what it is Mm -mm. Okay, so uh, we don't have to do that anywhere. So we're doing that in the level of the lex file. And uh, now I think I should be able to just remove this entire thing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, 
Vim also does one index character numbers. Maybe it's some old forgotten standard. Yeah, probably. Uh, so for a long time, I think the zero based indexing was not really standardized uh, among programmers, right? Um, so for quite some time, there was like there was like a fight between one indexed languages and zero indexed languages. And even to these days, we still have one uh, indexed languages like, like Lua or Julia. They are still like one indexed languages. So it's just like a you know legacy of those times. Um, okay. So here, uh, I suppose we have to do um, the check. Uh, we have to you know separate by the. Um, by the types of the token so we need to take a look at the token type right so here's the token type and if the token type is equal token uh word right we have to parse basically here we can straight up make uh, a lookup table yeah we can make a lookup table that maps a token type uh to um to an operation type and we can compress this entire thing actually we can quite easily compress this entire thing. And I think we should do that. Uh, you, you see, like, introduction of the, like, notion of the token makes it super easy to compress this entire stuff. Um, okay, so uh, let me see. So this is going to be assert, uh, not implemented yet. We need uh, to compress the word uh, parsing uh, into a lookup table, right? Into a lookup table. So otherwise, uh, if token type, if token type is a token uh, integer, right? We have to essentially construct this thing, right? We have to construct push, and the value have to become that, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, to to do to all right so i can put this thing in here uh, and we're straight up returning this op push the value is going to be the uh the token value right token uh value and the location is going to be token uh lock there we go uh otherwise uh this thing is straight up unreachable we're going to do assert false uh, unreachable and here is an interesting thing. We do have an uh, amount of tokens, right? So we can put an assert in here. Uh, count tokens equal to. So we can say exhaustive uh, token handling in parse token as OP. Uh, there we go. There we go. Mm, okay. So what we're going to be doing in here, so how can we convert this into some sort of a table? Well, we're going to have a mapping between this thing and the type of the operation, right? So we straight up need uh, the, um, the dictionary, right? We straight up need the dictionary. I'm going to go ahead and just copy paste this entire thing and we'll try to do a little bit of an Emacs magic, if you know what I'm talking about. Are you guys ready for a little bit of an Emacs magic? Um, so let me see. Mm, 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 mm. I wonder. Okay, so that is enough. Uh, I can remove that. I can remove that. And essentially, this is what we need. Uh huh. So this is going to be like that. Mm, all right. And I think I'm going to just merge all of that in here and essentially just remove this stuff and i think there we go we made a table of uh all of the words mapping to a particular operation and that was actually relatively easy with uh, magic of emacs so isn't that cool i think that's pretty fucking cool mate i think that's pretty fucking cool um so let's actually copy paste this entire stuff in here uh, and uh, this is going to be something like um, built in words right so this is going to be built in words and i think i want to move this exhaustive handling in here so every time we add a new operation we want to check uh, we want to check if its uh, operation does not introduce a new built-in word, right? Exhaustive uh, built-in uh, word 
words definition. Maybe we can do something like it. Build in words definition. Uh, keep in mind that not all of the new words need to be defined in here. Only those that introduce new built-in words. Right. So um, that not all of the new uh, OPs need to be defined in here. Only those that introduce the new built-in words. Right. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and now uh, I can say that we don't even need any of this shit. Right. So we can just straight up remove this thing. Uh, and there we go, right? If the uh, type of the token is a word, right? We want to check if uh, token uh, value is in built-in words, right? If it's in built-in words, I want to construct uh, a new thing. Uh, so the type of this thing is a built-in words, uh, built-in words token. Uh, value, right, uh, value, then we have to provide, uh, I think we don't have to provide the value, we only have to provide the location, and location is within the token itself, right? Uh, otherwise, otherwise, we need to throw an error uh, telling the user that you're trying to uh, parse an unknown built-in words. Mm -mm. Mm. All right. So uh, I think I removed the code uh, for reporting an error. So I think I'm going to just recover it from here. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be something like this. Unknown word that. So here is the location. Location is basically part of the uh, of the token, uh, like so. And then the word itself is essentially a token uh, value. There we go. Cool. Mm, and we managed to compress the parse token as LP into this compact uh, function that is not going to change very often. It's only going to change when we introduce a new kind of token, right, which we're, we are about to do. Uh, but generally, we're not going to introduce new kinds of tokens, um, but we'll see, we'll see. So uh, the compression here is relatively good. Okay, let's actually try to run the tests and see if it's, uh, you know, going to fail or not. Okay, all of the tests are, seem to be working. Um, okay, we can also try to run the tests on the examples. By the way, so there's two folders in here, uh, tests uh, and examples. Both of these folders contain some programs that you uh, you can compile and run, but the folder tests is meant to test different aspects of the language. Where when where examples is meant to showcase the language, right? That's why we have a hello world in here, rule one one zero, the program that you know uh, prints a sequence of numbers and stuff like that. This is more for like demonstration, but we still can use it for testing, right? So oh, we have a testing script that allows us to do that just, just because we can, right? So this is going to be something like this. I'm going to say test this uh, folder. And it actually, yeah, so apparently I refactored this thing first try. And um, that's kind of interesting, but that's what I did. Uh, so yeah, we introduced the notion of a token, which is rather cool, right? Hmm. So we can try to, I, I want to test how the error will work. Uh, so I'm going to introduce something like port and I'm going to put uh, an unknown built-in word, right? Something like hello. Uh, and I'm going to try to compile this into, I think I'm going to do comp uh, full port. And uh, there we go. So it's, it's already failed. Uh, unknown word. And then it straight up crashed for whatever reason. I'm not really sure why did it crash. Uh, I think I know why it crashed. Um, yeah, because it's because supposed to actually exit with uh, one, right? So it's supposed to exit with one, and there we go. So it says a no word hello, and it jumps in here. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, that is actually perfect. Let's do a committee committee, and then uh, maybe even a pushy pushy. So the most important thing we did in here, we introduced the notion of uh, tokens. That's what we did in here. Um, uh, introduce the notion uh, of uh, tokens, right? So we now have uh, a tokenization step, and from the tokenization step, we are essentially producing the uh, sequence of operations. Um, cheers, by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Alrighty. So let's remove this entire thing. And uh, the next thing we need to do, we need to introduce uh, a string, right? We need to introduce a string. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, to, to, to. So here's the token word, here's the token integer, and let's straight up introduce token str, right? So it's going to be iota, and that should fail in the places where we assert count tokens. And let's see how it's going to work. So uh, I'm going to just try to run the test. I'm going to sneeze as well, by the way, just a second. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> didn't debate this time. Um, all right. So there we go. Uh, this is what we have in here. Uh, so this is going to be count tokens. So this is going to be three, right? Because we're trying to handle the strings. And uh, if token um, type, if token type is token uh, str, right? I think we need to put it like some way here. Uh, we need to introduce a new uh, operation in here. So we could have actually uh, did two pushes, uh, but I didn't think it's gonna work really well. Um, so what I'm thinking is we need to introduce new kind of operation that allocates the uh, the string literal. So uh, something like push int, right? Push, uh, not push int, but push str. And because we have push str, we also need to introduce push int probably. So we'll have to rename these two things. Uh, and this thing is going to be value uh, token value uh, location and token uh, location, right? Token location. And then in the interpreter and in the compiler, we're going to interpret these things like slightly differently. In case of an integer, we're going to just push an integer. In case of a string, we'll have to allocate enough space in a static memory and put the string in there and then push the size of the string and then push the address of the string, right? So for pushing str, we have to do more things. Uh, but for now, we're gonna we're gonna do it like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and just extend the definition of this thing. So this is gonna be push int, and we are about to introduce push str. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So let's go ahead and see what we have in here. All right, so exhaustive built-in word definition. So since we didn't really introduce a new word operation, I think we can just do uh, th 36 and don't add anything in here because string does it by itself does not really introduce a new word, right? So there's nothing that needs to be done in here. So another thing is uh, here. So this is needs to be modified only if the new operation introduce a new block. It does doesn't really introduce a new block, so we can just skip this entire thing. Uh, you see, these kind of asserts help us to not forget to modify important uh, places, right? Every time you add a new operation, you have to make sure that you modify all of the corresponding places, and this is what these asserts do. It basically walk you through the entire code base, making sure that you edit and modify it at the corresponding places, right? So I really like this uh, kind of approach of, uh, of defining things, and I use it quite often in, in a lot of my projects actually um, all right so uh, the next one so program simulation in case of a program simulation yes now we have to do uh, an actual work in here so uh, here we have a push and obviously this has to be push integer and l if uh, op uh, two, 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 two. type is equal op push str and I'm not really sure what exactly I have to do in here so I suppose I need to uh, have a static memory I need to have a static memory in the simulation uh, and I need to put that string in there and also you need to be able to uh, have an address to that memory so it's actually a lot of uh, different things that you need to do in here so I'm gonna do something like false uh, not implemented yet so I just want to continue the interpretation uh, and then I'm gonna implement this into I think a little bit later okay so what else do we have in here uh, I forgot to update this into I think uh, there we go so now where does it fail so it fails in a couple of other places uh, 35 um, so it fails in the compilation uh, of our nation. All right, so let's do this a similar thing. L if 
uh, op type equal op push string uh, right and in here i also gonna say something like not implemented yet right and i'm gonna go to 35 uh 35 and it's gonna be 36 there we go and uh, all right that's pretty cool uh, we added support for new token type and um new operations but since we don't use any of these operations and any of these tokens uh nothing is failing yet right so uh let's go ahead and try to write a test for this entire thing so uh i think i'm gonna pull it into the stack right so this one is a push integer right so this is a push integer and another one is going to be uh something like uh push str right so this is going to be push str uh let's go ahead and do that mm -mm 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 -mm. so i want to do hello world right so this is going to be hello world then uh std in uh write syscall and then we perform syscall three there we go so this is what i want um Right, we, we don't really parse this yet, but this is exactly what I want. Uh, all right, let's try to run this. And uh, there we go, unknown word, hello. Right, as you can see, it doesn't know how to uh, parse this kind of thing. And it basically recognized this as a separate word. Right, so it recognized this thing as a separate word, which is obviously not correct. So we have to go to our Lexa and uh, just make modifications accordingly somehow so since our lexer is uh line based we probably won't be able to have string literals that contain new lines if you know what i'm talking about right because the first thing we do in our lexer um let me see let me see so lex file right so here's the lex file uh we open the file and the literally the first thing is we split everything by lines right so we read lines, then we enumerate them, then uh, we have a function that consumes a single line and then splits that line into words and so on and so forth. And maybe within this thing, we can look at the word that we got, right? Look at the word that we got. And if it starts with um, double, uh, double quote, we're gonna change the mode, we parse this entire thing and we look for the second double quote and we're going to consider that the whole token uh, and that means we won't have uh, string literals that may look like this which would be kind of useful don't you guys think i think like i want to be able to support this kind of shit, right and if i try to print it it will literally print these new lines here as well sometimes i quite often in like in other languages miss this sort of feature i think like c doesn't support this kind of stuff uh i'm pretty sure but it would be cool if we supported this kind of thing uh, but implementing that could be a little bit annoying, right? So because we'll have to rewrite the um, tokenizer completely uh, because we also need to keep track of the new lines differently and so on and so forth. Um, also, no double quote in strings. Uh, this is a completely orthogonal problem to what I'm saying right now. The double quotes within strings is solved by a thing called escaping. Right, so, and it has nothing to do with having new lines within the strings, right? So it's just like, I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so um, let me see, let me see. <clears throat> um, to, 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 to let me think. So that means we'll have to... Um, We'll have to get rid of this entire thing, right? And just to read the whole file, right? We can we have to read the whole file and then craft a function that is similar to Lex line, but uh, it doesn't work on a single line. It works on a whole string, right? Maybe this function is going to be called something like uh, Lex str, right? And it will accept the text. Uh, maybe we can call it the text, right? Lex text. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Lex text. And what's interesting here, it actually keeps track of the column and also a row. All right. Mm 
So the initial row is going to be like zero, right? So this is the row zero. Uh, then, um, mm -mm. huh? Also, do we want to keep track of the column? Right, so maybe it does make sense to keep track of the column, right? So we keep track of the row and column. And if we want to find the position of this entire thing, we think, well, we can do that, right? So essentially what we have to do, right? Uh, we have to keep track of the actual index, right? So this is the actual index. Uh, so there is a little bit of redundancy in here, right? Um, but it is what it is. Mm, but it is what it is. Uh, while an index is less than the length of the uh, text, uh, Hector HSC, thank you so much for 100 bits. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate the support. Um, all right, so. Um, okay, go. So the first thing we want to do, uh, we want to see what mod are we in, right what mode are we in or does it even matter right does it even matter maybe it doesn't even matter right so uh maybe we want to have something like index end and what we're trying to find we're trying to find the uh the next non uh non space right so this is going to be text this is going to be the index and lambda x x is space um right Mm, 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 mm. Find column. Um, uh huh. Uh -huh. Mm. Oh yeah, I see. So I should actually do something like uh, like this. Uh, mm, mm. Oh my god, I lo I lost the the thing that I copy pasted. So this is gonna be that text zero lambda uh, lambda x not x is space right so basically we're trimming all of the white spaces in here trimming all of the white spaces but we also need to keep track of the columns and rows and that makes it so uh so difficult so it's easy to parse the way i want to parse but with the losing information about rows and columns. It is super easy to lose that information. Mm, it is extremely easy to lose that. Mm, 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 mm. 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 Unless... Um, Okay, so maybe if we try to hack the lex line function, how could we do that? Right, so here is the lex line, right? And essentially, uh, if uh, line column is equal to this thing that means we're doing the we're trying to parse the string uh, assert uh, mm, uh, parsing string uh, string literal is not implemented yet right so otherwise we're trying to parse some sort of like a word right and in here we're trying to like find the next thing right we're trying to find the next thing so if we are trying to parse the uh, string literal, instead of looking for a not uh, for a space, what essentially we're trying to do, we're looking for x uh, being equal to that thing, right? So this is a column and in our case. And again, if we couldn't find this entire thing, right? If we couldn't find this entire thing, um, maybe we should indicate that the next uh, line also should be something like that. I don't know. Uh, I think I'll have to think about it a little bit deeper, right? So for now, I'm gonna 
not uh, and uh, not implement uh, new lines within the string literals, right? So I think I'm going to think about that a little bit later, right? And then here uh, I'm going to yield, uh, right? I'm going to yield a column uh, lex word line and as you can see we have a repetition of the code in here right so the only difference in here is essentially with this predicate right that's literally the only difference so maybe uh, maybe I will be able to compress this entire uh, like condition at some point but yeah it's essentially like this thing is the same right the only thing that is different is this predicate um, and I'm thinking is that, can I just like move uh, these two lines outside of the uh, of the condition and make the condition look like this? And uh, just in case, uh, I'm gonna sort of define this variable before uh, with none, uh, right? Uh, so here is none, uh, but if the line starts with this thing, um, right, uh, I'm, I'm trying to find the next uh, uh, quote in here uh, otherwise I'm trying to find the next space in here um, that makes sense okay that's that's pretty cool uh, that is pretty pretty cool um, so let's actually do something like uh, a to-do uh, Lexer does not uh, support new lines uh, inside of the string literals I'll, I'll think how we can implement that within the current architecture um, so, and uh, let me, let me see. So I need to maybe reload the entire thing. All right, so let's actually try to reload. And uh, I forgot index, index and, uh, okay, so I have a garbage in here. So this thing is not needed anymore. Uh, load, next one, there we go. And let's try to lex a file and see how it's gonna look like. Did I add a strings anywhere? I think I did. Okay, so let's actually do something like uh, test, uh, test, text, tests, uh, tests, stack, uh, stack, porth. Okay, so is it gonna work? I think I, think I fucked it up, okay. <laughs> All right, that's that's pretty funny. Um, I, we fucked it up, um, and I think I know why. This is because um, if we're doing string literal, right? I have to skip the um, the quote, right? I have to skip the quote. Uh, first of all, uh, when I'm yielding the string, I have to do something like column plus one and a column and minus one, right? Uh, column plus one and column and minus one. So this is one of the things. And also, by the way, uh, line column and uh, must be uh, equal to this, right? It must be equal to this. Uh, and then when I'm uh, computing the next column, uh, column and I have to do column plus one to skip that uh, double quote. So that means there, there are discrepancies in here. There are straight up discrepancies in here and um, yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. So this is gonna be to do. Report unclosed string literals as uh, proper compiler errors instead of Python assertions. Right, instead of Python assertions. So uh, this is what we need to do in here. So and this is why the lexer was actually looping because uh, it was stuck on this double quote because we were not skipping it. Um, okay, let's uh, try. Let's try to do that one more time. Uh, and is it going to do the thing? Um, unknown word. That is kind of perfect. Not going to lie. Um, so, well, that was strange. So it parsed this entire thing as the, um, as the string literal. So, uh, what I need to do in here, uh, mm, 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 mm. Mm. so here's the column. This is going to be the, okay. I see. So it has to be column plus one then. Yeah, it has to be column plus one and because of that. Okay, okay, okay. So I think we're almost there. Uh, are we going to finally parse this entire shit? Unknown word. Um, mm, uh -huh, so this one is not needed then. Uh, is it going to work now? Okay, unknown. Okay, this is uh, this is actually perfect. This is actually perfect. So um, 
Yeah. So we finally managed to parse the string uh, as it is. Uh, but it tr tries to actually recognize it as a word, which is kind of sus in my opinion, right? Because it needs to be recognized as a, uh, as a string. Uh, it needs to be recognized as a string. So token type, where does it take a token type from? Uh, where do we set a token type? So we're trying to lex a word Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, this is where. Okay, so this is where it starts to. Uh, it tries to do that. Um, hmm. In both of the cases, so we have to try to do that um, in here. Mm, 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 mm. Well, we don't really need to do that uh, like this because I know for a fact. I know for a fact that this is a token. Uh, str right it's a token str so there's nothing that needs to be done in here and as a matter of fact maybe i can actually move this try uh in here uh, i think it would be a little bit better uh all right so mm, so i can move it to text of token right so text of token uh like so and here, instead of returns, I could do something like yield, right? So this is going to be yield. There we go. So, and we don't need the lex word. Uh, okay, so lex word is not defined. And where do you use a lex word? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So too many values to unpack. Uh, that is very interesting. So expected to. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that means I have to do something like column here. Uh, we're almost there. We're almost there. So this is going to be the column like that. Uh, and finally, now it complains about not implemented for push string. We parsed the string and we went to simulation. And in the simulation, we hit not implementing push in a string. So we went a little bit further. We went a little bit further. So we already passed the parsing stage. We're in a simulation, a simulation stage, which is freaking perfect. So the question is, how are we going to push all of that? Right. So because, OK, we can push the size of the string. It's not, not, a, uh, not a big deal. So I can do stack append. Right. So this is a stack append. I take OP, uh, OP uh, value. Right. And that well, I just push the length of this thing. But now I need to push the address. I need to push the address. And the question is where I'm going to push that stupid address. Uh, I need a place where, like somewhere in the memory, right? Somewhere in a simulated memory where we're going to keep all of that. Um, we can reserve a little bit in front of the memory for the strings. Uh, right. So we can just reserve these strings like uh, in the memory up front. And every time the user does op mem, right, we actually uh, append not zero, but the, um, the memory after the reserved for the strings, right? So you know what I'm talking about? Uh, so I can actually draw that. Mm -mm, I think. I think you can draw that. Mm -mm. So this is the memory, uh, the simulated memory. So before we were always like given the beginning of the memory at zero, right? So this is the zero. But now we can reserve some memory for the strings, right? And the memory now starts somewhere here. And every time you refer to a string, we're, we're going to be given like a, a pointer within like some way here. Uh, right, so something like that, and it's gonna be uh, gonna be kind of similar in the compiled mod as well, right? But in the simulated mod, I don't know. It's kind of sus that that memory is gonna be sort of limited, um, but maybe that's all right. Uh, one of the things we can do actually, maybe we can uh, have something like str capacity, right? Since I'm in the forty. Uh, right, so this is str capacity and uh, str capacity like this. There we go. Mm -mm. str capacity. Mm. 
What's interesting is that what if we want to print this entire stuff in the loop, right? Mm -mm. You have enough space on the table to use tablet. I wasn't using tablet, by the way. I was using mouse because I was too lazy to actually bring the, the, the tablet in here. Anyway, so... Um, <clears throat> Um, what uh, what I was doing? Ah, so what if we have uh, the um, the loop, right? Something like this. Uh, so let me change to all Pascal, right? All Pascal, ten zero. While um, two dupe less. Uh, we're gonna do do, and in here I wanna do high. Right, hi, one, one, syscall three, and then uh, one plus, and then end. You see, in the simulation mode, that will constantly allocate that string within that buffer, which is kind of sus, not gonna lie. <laughs> um, so, um, and we don't really want to allocate this thing all the time. In, in case of the compilation, it's actually super easy to make it allocate only once within the static memory, but in the simulation, um, there's nothing much we can do. Uh, one of the things we can do, we can basically... Oh boy, this will require some sort of like a pre-computation step, if you know what I'm talking about. Right. So first, go through the entire code base, collect all of the strings and push them into this thing. Uh, and so on and so forth. But maybe we can do that lazily. Basically, uh, if you encounter the string and there is some marker that indicates that the string was already compiled in there. Yeah, it's a dynamic language. We can actually do that. We can add a new field within the, um, within the OP, right? So if OP str, we can have something like if um, uh, allocated, right? Uh, allocated in uh, OP, that means we're going to be actually appending, um, uh, let's put it like this, address, right? So this is going to be the address, uh, stack uh, append, right? This is going to be op uh, address, right? So if there is already address uh, for, for that string, uh, we, we're just going to push that address. Otherwise, um, we're going to allocate this stuff within the memory, right? So, and add this address in there. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good solution. This is actually a pretty good solution and I really like it. Um, okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, and a memory, OP memory, by the way. Uh, OP memory. Uh, so instead of zero, we have to put str uh, capacity, right? So we're offsetting this entire thing. Uh, so essentially what we're doing, we're simulating a virtual machine in Python, which is the dumbest thing you can imagine, but that's what we're doing. <laughs> right. So you're using an interpreted language to interpret a virtual machine. Like, why would you do that? I mean, like, we do that because uh, we're going to get rid of the Python eventually, but I mean, anyway. Um, so we want to have something like str size, right? So how much we already allocated within the strings. Uh, right. And essentially, uh, here we're going to do the following stuff. OP address is going to be equal to str size. And then str size plus uh, OP uh, value length, right? OP value length. Mm, and another interesting thing is that um, we want to also assert that str size is less or equal str capacity, right? So this is quite important. Uh, string uh, buffer overflow, right? So we don't want this kind of thing to happen. And that's pretty much it, actually. Um, so, yep. Mm, two, 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 two. So we also... Uh, we also need to append this address after we've done all of that, I think. So, and in here we're going to do uh, IP plus one. So what I'm thinking is that if address is not in the OP, uh, we're going to be doing this thing. We're going to uh, sort of create this address and then uh, we're going to do it like that. There we go. Okay, th that's perfect, actually. First, we push the, the value, then we check if we already compiled this entire thing. 
Uh, and if we did, we just reuse this entire stuff. Yoda Droid subscribed with a tier one. Thank you so much for five months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic Python club. Uh, all right, so let's actually try to compile this entire thing and see if it's gonna work. And all right, so this is pretty cool. It already failed at um, at the output. So it. Yeah, okay, let's actually try to run uh, without tests, right? So I'm gonna do port simulate tests stack and see uh, what is gonna actually uh, print in there. Uh, did it print hello world? It didn't even print hello world, congratulations. <laughs> I wonder why, uh, I wonder why it didn't print hello world. It's kinda, it's kinda, su I know why. We never actually copied that string into the memory. We have to copy there. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, you know, the carrot at is actually zero. Um, so, okay, so we need to copy that shit in there. The question is, how can we copy? <laughs> uh, is there any convenient way to just, like, you know, copy a string into a byte array? Um, okay, so let's actually, let's actually see. Maybe I'm going to go into the Python. Uh, so byte array, right, if I take a look at the help, do, does it have any useful methods for that? Um, two, 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 two. So there's a lot of shit in here. So there's append, center, clear, copy, return a copy of B. Whatever, what, what is B? I'm not really sure. So you can, uh, there's also like a slash. But this is, uh, I don't want to return anything. I want to actually copy a string into uh, into this thing. So we can extend, uh, you can hex, insert, insert a single item into the binary. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. I try to assign to a slice of the memory. I wonder if it's gonna work. Okay, so let's actually do bytes array. Uh, all right, and let's say that I want to have like a 10 of these things. Right, so here is the byte array. And then if I want to have a slice, I want to have a slice of five of these things. What if I assign like, um, you know, 69? Uh, can I assign only bytes, buffers, or iterables? Okay, so if I have something like bytes, a byte array, six, um, actually, maybe 69 multiplied by five, right? So, e. <laughs> And then I say that I'm trying to assign this entire thing like so. Uh, okay, so that straight up worked. Um, okay, thank you. Well, you're a professional Python developer, so I, I think I should trust you. Um, okay. <clears throat> so we're using the size of the string quite often, not gonna lie. So maybe it makes sense to actually save the size to a separate variable, right? So this is going to be something like this. Here is the n. Um, and uh, now uh, I want to do mm -mm -mm -mm. memory starting at str size, right? str size and str size plus n. And what I'm assigning here, uh, can I actually assign a string? Uh, right there, so uh, e multiplied by 5, right, so here is e, uh, I wonder if it's like possible, or do I have to convert that string into the byte array as well? Uh, okay, so I can always do something like bytes, right, I see bytes, um, uh, utf8, is that what you want? Okay, so, and uh, let's actually put something like a, a, all right, that's that's cool, uh, and it's gonna be kind of um, it's kind of kind of annoying because it's UTF. If you know what I'm talking about, right? And if I have something like um, like this, uh, get mirror, right? And if I take the length of this entire thing, it will return me the length of the Unicode characters, right? So. Um, and that does not correspond to what we have in here. So I suppose what we have to do, we have to first convert it to bytes, uh, to UTF, uh, UTF. Yeah, yeah, convert, convert first and then take the length of this entire thing. 
Uh, and um, so Cyrillic, as far as I know, they're actually twice as long as the ASCII, right? So it's actually, yeah, yeah 10. But, but I mean, uh, space is one byte and each Cyrillic letter is actually two bytes uh, in UTF-8. Being Russian is actually quite convenient for testing Unicode because uh, you, you can just use Cyrillic uh, layout. <laughs> it's actually super convenient. Uh, all right, so we'll have to do that thing first. Okay. <clears throat> Let's continue. Uh, so this is the N and this is the bytes. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm going to call it BS. Uh, this is BS uh, bytes. I see bytes. ETF8. Uh, and uh, this is going to be length of BS. And uh, then we're appending this thing in here, right? So the address becomes str uh, of this thing. And then we're assigning bytes. And then we end add this thing in here. And uh, that's pretty much it. I, I don't think we need anything else in here. Um, all right, so that, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, ah, shit, fuck, damn. There we go. So we have a hello world. We don't have a new line in here though, because we don't have escaping or anything like that. But uh, yeah, we, we have a hello world in a simulation. Right, uh, we have a hello world in a simulation. So it would be nice to have some sort of escaping, if you know what I'm talking about. All right, so, but I don't think it's gonna work. If I put like a slash n in here uh, right now, it literally gonna print slash n, right? So. <laughs> I wonder if in Python there is some sort of function that can un unescape things. Uh, Python uh, unescape string. I'm pretty sure that, like, Python has a lot of shit, right? So, uh, one thing that I was actually surprised, by the way, Python has uh, a thing called Schlex, right? Python has a thing called Schlex, and that thing basically allows you unescape the shell lexems or something like that uh, and it is actually designed for small dsls in python that sort of compile or generate shell scripts and this is precisely what i needed when i uh, wanted to generate the logs uh, that print shit uh, for instance if i want to compile uh, something like uh, arithmetics all right, so this is going to be arithmetics. Yeah, there we go. So you see, uh, I'm actually printing the, um, the 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 shell commands, and I want to be able to properly escape them. For example, when one of the arguments has a space, like look uh, what's going to happen if I am going to have a program that contains a space. Right, so arithmetics, I'm going to put space and foo. Right, if now this entire thing contains a space. Uh, this is gonna. Uh, this is how it's gonna be printed, right? It wraps uh, uh, quotes around it. So Python has a lot of weird, different shit in its standard library, and I was actually surprised that it has that. So yeah, <laughs> and what's what's surprising is that this is exactly what I needed because I wanted like shell correct output of the commands, right? Does this make sense? Um, so I'm pretty sure there should be something to escape strings as well. Uh, so let's actually take a look. <laughs> Uh, let's actually take a look. Um, yeah, 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 so escape and an escape or something. Uh, you can decode. <laughs> did, did you guys know that? that you, could, you can just decode that. <laughs> All right, so we have hello um, and world, right? And oh shit, what the fuck is this? I didn't want to do that. Uh, hello uh, world. And let's actually bring this entire thing. And what if I decode? Uh, what was that? String escape. Uh, string escape. And debate it. Um, oh, it's a it's a Python too, right? Oh, it's in in Python. Uh, you have to be like B. Uh, am I am I an idiot? Unicode escape. Okay. Uh, Unicode. Okay, that's perfect, actually. Mm -mm -mm. Unicode escape. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. So um, token str, right? And uh, now, mm, so this is a string, right? This is a string. K 
can I convert? Oh, but if I have a string, right? If I have a string, what I have to do, I have to convert it to bytes, right? First, and then. Um, can I just do something like escape? Then? Uh, oh, wait. Which you have eight. Uh, it's kind of sus, I'm not gonna lie, but. I guess it's fine, uh, unless I open it with B, unless I open it with B and it's going to be bite and I think it's going to break a lot of stuff. So I'm not going to do that right now, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just convert it to bytes, uh, UTF-8, and then I'm going to decode bytes with Unicode, uh, Unicode escape and I'm going to put it to do in here. Um, so converting uh, text of token to bytes and back and back uh, just to unescape uh, things is kind of sus, uh, not gonna lie. Uh, let's try to do something about that. For, for instance, uh, open the file with uh, RB in Lex file. Right, I don't want to do it right now because I'm not sure how exactly it's going to break everything in here. Right, so I'm going to put it to do in here and just forget about it. Uh, Unquote. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right. So, yes, 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 okay, freaking this one. And let's see uh, if we can now simulate this entire thing. So, this is going to be simulation. And this is going to be the test stack port. And do we have hello world? And that did not work for some reason. I wonder why. I wonder why. Mm. Mm -mm. This is because I'm an idiot. It needs to be done up there. <laughs> All right. This needs to be done up here. Uh, All right. Uh huh. So, mm -hmm. all right, all right, and in here, well, I might as well actually uh, save this entire thing to text of token, all right, and then this is going to be bytes, text of token, UTFA 8, and then decode, um, unicode, uh, unicode escape. We could escape and uh, let's try to. There we go. So now we have a new line. Perfect. Mm -mm. Uh, but the codex uh, module has pretty much what you want. Isn't like decode uses that module? Uh, I'm pretty sure it does. But I mean, I, I don't really care much about this kind of stuff because uh, I'm going to get rid of the Python anyway in the future. Right, so I just want to get the language to a usable, usable state, uh, and then I'm going to start rewriting it in, in itself. Right, so, all right. So that's pretty pogue. And let's see if the compilation is going to work. Okay, so we don't support this kind of stuff in the compilation yet. Um, this is very interesting. So how are we going to be doing all of that? Mm -hmm. So, uh huh. Mm, do, 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 do. Uh, we'll need to put the strings, right, we'll need to put the strings to uh, to a segment, to a separate segment in here. So we already have uh, a segment for the memory, so BSS segment, and I suppose we need to introduce a segment for uh, the for the strings, right? So this is going to be segment dot data, right? And inside of that segment, we're going to keep all of the strings, mm -hmm. right? So op uh, push str uh, out right uh, push. Uh, this one is actually push int, and I'm not really sure if I want to actually. Um, you know, print, well, I mean, I can print, print the string in here, uh, but here we have a push str. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and what I need to push in here is, 
the size of the string. So, and the size of the string is going to be something like um, value, value and the length, right? There we go. So this is the value and the length. And then we're gonna push that into the stack. So this is gonna be push racks. Okay, cool. So the next thing we need to do, we need to push the address of that string. Uh, so, and what's going to be the address of that string? That's a good question. Uh, so I think we're going to have labels for each individual string in here, right? So uh, we can say that it's going to be string like this. And um, we're going to keep track of the allocated string somewhere here. Um, so let's call it something like str count, right? Initially it's going to be zero. Oh, maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to do it like that. So this is going to be strs and uh, we're going to keep all of the strings in a list, right? We're going to append the strings into, into a list. Um, all right, so uh, let me try the following thing. So this is going to be strs and I'm going to be just appending this entire stuff um, yet again, I'm sorry. I'm going to put it in here. Uh, I'm going to append this thing in here. There we go. So I'm, I'm appending this string. Uh, and then uh, this is going to be... Hmm, I don't know. Maybe it's going to be len strs and we're going to be pushing the string afterwards. Right, so we're going to have str0, str1, str2 and so on and so forth. Right. Um, and that is actually it, I think. This is the whole compilation of a push string. You push the size and you push the address. Uh, and then after the entire compilation, right, after the entire compilation, we have to iterate through all of the strings and we have to put them into the data segment. Right, so this is going to be something like um, maybe index and then uh, s in enumerate uh, strs. And that's what we need to do in here. So this is going to be out right. Uh, strd, uh, this is going to be something like this, mm, two, 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 and this is going to be the index. And the next stuff is rather interesting because now we have to maybe represent the string as a sequence of bytes or something like that. If you know what I'm talking about, if you know what I'm talking about. So uh, if I have something like hello world, right? Uh, what I was doing, actually, uh, I was trying to convert it into a bytes, right? And I converted it into bytes like this, uh, right? So there we go. And I would like to maybe represent this entire thing as a sequence of bytes, but I'm not sure. Can I convert it to a list of some sort? Right, so here is the list, right? And maybe, um, can I join everything with something like this? I'm not sure if I can do that, but uh expected str well you can always do something like map uh and just str each individual thing in here and that basically gives you something like this um which is totally fine um and then we can slap a db in front of it uh like so right and that is basically the allocation of the string so maybe to keep this, uh, this thing compact, we can just do it like that. Uh, and I wonder if instead of str, we can do something like hex. Uh, there we go. So that looks even more epic, right? So because it's a hexadecimal. Um, so yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, all right. So let me copy paste this entire thing. And uh, I think it's going to be somewhere like this. Ah, it, it didn't properly copy paste. It didn't properly copy-paste. Can I just... Uh, I should have copy-pasted this thing. Mm, there we go. So what I need to write is this thing uh, for S. There we go. Um, so let's uh, go and uh, try to compile the entire thing. So this is going to force compile, but we're not going to run it, right? So this is going to be test. Uh, stack porth and it does not compile. I wonder why. Uh, write text exactly. Um, oh, okay, I see. It's, it's a classical problem. Uh, classic W. Uh, keep forgetting about this shit. Um, might as well actually do something like S. 
uh, and something like this. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at the generated assembly. Right, so uh, tests uh, stack asm. Test stack asm, and there we go. We have str0, and here is the string. Uh, to, 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 okay, so uh, maybe I want to actually do something like one, two, three, four, right? So, and uh, yeah, let me revert this into I think so it should look a little bit better. I'm thinking, do I want to like separate it by like these lines or something? I'm not sure. Um, so let's actually do it like in a single line, maybe. Uh, DB as we can. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So maybe it's going to be single line. I, I went into a bike changing mode. Mm. So that's that's a little bit better, I think. That's a little bit better. Just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and try to run the compiled version. Okay, and the compiled version worked. There we go. So we have a support, some somewhat a good support for string literals. How about that? So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do a committee committee and then maybe even push a pusher. Uh, first of all, uh, if I try to run the tests, right, if I try to run the tests, it, they will fail uh, because uh, the expected output does not contain hello world. What we need to do, we need to record the uh, expected output, right? So as you can see, that updated the expected output. So now we expect hello world in here. And if I try to run the tests, uh, right, so they're not going to fail. Right, so everything's fine. And uh, let's go ahead and do committee committee. So we don't need this thing anymore. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, implement string literals. There we go. So now we have string literals. Uh, and one thing I want you to uh, update as well. Here in the examples, we have a hello world. And the hello world looks like this. Uh, which is pretty scuffed and there is like a justification in here is that we don't have string literals yet so we simply write hello world uh, character by character into memory and then we call the write syscall. Now we don't have to do that anymore. We can just remove this entire shit, uh, just take this entire thing and just and then um, write it into a uh, standard input and we're gonna use write syscall and this is gonna be syscall3 and that is it. So this is hello world. Uh, this finally you can write a hello world in this language. This language was too incomplete, but you couldn't comfortably write a hello world in it. Now you can, uh, right? So and uh, for examples we also have tests. So let's actually do tests by uh, examples, uh, right? And as you can see, hopefully uh, everything is working, right? So. Mm, Update hello uh, hello world in examples. Uh, there we go. All right. And maybe we want to update some stuff in uh, in README as well. A uh, simple program that prints. Uh, okay, example. Uh, hello world. Mm, so this is gonna be it. Actually, the thing that works really well uh, with our language is a Pascal mode. Uh, right, so I think I need to use Pascal. Uh, so we, okay, so that's fine. So and in here I'm gonna actually maybe go to hello world and just copy paste this entire thing. Um, hello world, simple program that prints that stuff. Uh, you know what I want to do in the future, by the way? Uh, before I introduce any procedures or anything like that, I want to introduce a system of macros. And a system of macros basically lets you take the sequence of words or sequence of, yeah, sequence of operations and tag them under a single name. Essentially, I want to be able to do something like define, um, actually macro, and let's say write. 
at right and then I want to say that right is going to be 1 1 C scroll uh, 3 right and then uh, I, sh I want to be able to put right in here and at compile time right will be expanded into this thing right so but this thing is not going to be like uh, on the level of a text it's going to be actually language aware you would be able to actually have like ifs uh, and and in here and maybe in the future you want to be able to put parameters in here but it will expand into sequence of operations um, so and maybe it's also going to be uh, you know recursive maybe it's going to expand indefinitely and you'll be able to have like a Turing complete language at compile time but I don't know so and uh, in the future I want to be able to write hello world in my language like this so that would be actually pretty cool right uh because that that is really really friendly right being able to just say hello world and write and that will call a write syscall and write is going to be a macro uh so but we're going to leave macro implementation for the next time right so we're going to leave the macro implementation for the next time mm, so we don't need that uh okay uh add hello world uh uh, example to read me and I suppose I'm gonna push that right into the repo and we are about to create a pull request how about that okay mm so implement string literals finally and string literals are extremely important important for the uh, self-hosted compiler uh, because uh, if you take a look at the compiler itself, right? So what it does, uh, especially in the compile function, like a compile program function, it prints shed ton of strings, shed ton of hard-coded strings. And if our language does not support string literals, we're gonna have a really hard time replicating all of that, right? So as you can see, it's just like a basically a database of uh, chunks of assembly. And what we do, we just patch between chunks of assembly depending on the tokens and stuff like that. So, and our language needs to support this kind of stuff so we can rewrite it in itself so yeah um all right so i hope uh the tests pass i actually run the tests an example on ci so um let's see if everything's okay uh everything is passing and we officially have a support for string literals how about that isn't that cool i think it's get them cool uh all right does anyone have any questions maybe um Mm, in which language is he coding it? I'm coding that in Python. So this language is implemented in Python. Uh, right. So, but it's going to be like, a, you know, initial bootstrap. Uh, when the language is mature enough, we're going to rewrite the language in itself. Uh, to, 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 to. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Does it still work with two different strings? Let's actually find out. Uh, so, um, full fourth. Uh, all right. So this is going to be hello world and uh, full bar. Theoretically, it should, in my opinion, but uh, it never hurts to actually check. Uh, all right. So let's try to simulate the entire thing. Uh, simulate full fourth. And as you can see, it does work, right? So we didn't put the new lines uh, between the strings, right? So let's actually put them uh, in there. Uh, and everywhere, as you can see, it's still working. So we're trying to print two different strings. So I suppose your concern was that um, to, 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 in Python, he's not keeping track of string I've set into memory, which is wrong. I do keep track of a string I've set into the memory. Let's take a look at the uh, at the simulation. Uh, simulation. Okay, so here is a string size, which is basically how much within the string buffer we already consumed, right? And if we encounter push string, right, we check the string of set if a string of set is already present within the operation and if it's not present we compute that offset and remember it and the next time we use that offset 
You see, we do keep track of that entire stuff. Right, so uh, that's why it works. And we can also try to compile the entire thing. And let's take a look at assembly output. Uh, within the assembly output, as you can see, we have two separate strings, right? So here are two separate strings. And if I try to run the entire thing, it also works. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have a video how do you write tests in CI, CD, the git outer tests? Uh, you mean for this specific project? No, I don't have a video for that. I actually did that off screen because I think it's not that interesting. In my opinion, developing the actual like compilers features are more interesting than maintenance work. So I actually try to keep maintenance work off screen. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, to, 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 to. <laughs> All right, I suppose uh, no more questions, right? So, I guess that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really freaking appreciate that. Uh, have a good one, and I see you all next time. Um, fabulous flow. Thank you so much for uh, Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we have another question actually. Doing hello world right twice would create two strings, both in interpreted and compiler mode. Is that the correct behavior? Uh, it is the current behavior. Whether it's correct behavior, it's up to up to debate. Um, right. So I think um, it is not optimal behavior. I wouldn't say it's incorrect one. It's not optimal one. And since it's not optimal one, it falls into the scope of optimization and optimizations is outside of the scope of the development right now. Right. So we're doing a, a lot of unoptimal decisions because we just want to advance the, the features, right? So once we have a mature compiler, only then we're going to think about optimizations. Uh, but you, you're right. R right now, if I do uh, hello world twice, right? Uh, if I do hello world twice, uh, it will create two separate uh, se separate strings. We can even check that uh, in the final assembly. Uh, right there we go. Yes, I don't. Uh, I wouldn't say it's incorrect behavior. It's not optimal behavior, but it's the current behavior. Mm. Um, all right, that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one and I see you next time. I don't know when, uh, so maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after tomorrow. Uh, if you're watching all of that on Twitch, check out the description. I put all of the necessary links in here, uh, specifically the link to the source code and uh, the link to the playlist uh, where um, uh, of the development of this language. If you're watching on Twitch, check out the YouTube channel where uh, we archive all of the votes. And um, yeah, I guess I gotta go. Thanks everyone uh, for watching. Uh, love you all. Mwah.